Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I am so glad you joined me today. I uh, want to talk to you about a subject that's been disturbing me. Uh, my wife and I, occasionally we get away and we, we go window shopping. I like to just get out and walk and look. And We were at a, an outlet mall and we were noticing how many of the stores had clothing with pictures of skulls on them. In fact, we started noticing that almost every store had displays with skulls in the display window and I began to wonder why is it that our culture is so obsessed with death and then I thought well just look at the news you know you got ISIS uh, on the television and they're beheading uh, people because they don't believe the same way they do and you've got all these uh, terrorist acts around the world and you got at home you got people that are uh, killing one another and I began to think that pretty much is a reflection of what's going on is a lot of people are thinking about death and dying and uh, I recently was back in North Carolina at Billy Graham's retreat it's called the Cove and while I was there they gave me a magazine and this magazine had on its front cover this it's a skull and I said even Billy Graham's magazine has a picture of a skull and it talks about our culture of death, including abortion, euthanasia, which is taking the life of a senior adult or somebody who's very ill, ISIS, and even Hollywood. I thought it was really interesting when Liam Neeson recently uh, cursed about uh, handgun ownership in the United States of America. And I thought, buddy, if you didn't have a handgun, how would you make any of your movies? So it's uh, everywhere. It's, it, it's even in Hollywood. So. I was thinking, did Jesus ever have to confront these issues of death? And I thought, death was in his vision all the time. He walked around healing people, feeding people, raising people up so they could walk again, and so forth. And I wanted to read to you a passage in the Bible. It's in John chapter 14, it begins in verse 1. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and he is comforting them because he's preparing them for his soon uh, going to the cross and dying upon the cross for them. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And the guy we always call Doubting Thomas, I think he was just honest. He said, uh, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Isn't it interesting that Jesus didn't say, I am going to die. He didn't say, I am death. He didn't say, there's no hope. In fact, people, he is our hope. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the counterculture to this culture of death in which we live today. If you want to know the way to enjoy and to experience life, I'm talking eternal life, then it comes to you through and is available to you through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus was God's gift to us from his Father. And uh, Jesus Christ gave his life upon the cross for you and for me. He endured the cross because he loves you so. He wants you to come to him in faith and receive him to yourself. He will give you himself and eternal life.